Welcome, welcome. Hi, everybody. We are Monday night and we are here doing silhouette fashions for fall 2019. There are so many ideas in my brain. <laughs> I just kept sewing and sewing and sewing. I didn't get them all done, but you know what? We'll do them another time or we'll hold them or I'll do them Thursdays or whatever. But there's so much beautiful, great stuff out there and it's easy to sew and it's expensive. And it, I mean, you know, people say, why do you sew? And I've often heard women say, well, it's not to save money. Oh my gosh, you can save so much money. You can just save so much money. So I really had fun. I, I really had fun. I hope I can convey this to you and that we can have just a really fun night exchanging ideas and really inspiring you to get behind that machine if you haven't or if you haven't in a while, hit that pedal to the metal and go. All right, first a joke because it's getting to be Halloween time. It's October, we're into fall. It was 60 degrees this morning in Dallas. Oh my gosh, it was so exciting. It's fall, we're gonna make pumpkin pies this week. We're doing just all kinds of fun things. So. You know, when they come to the door, it's trick or treat. So you can give them a, a joke, and if they don't answer the joke correctly, they don't get a treat. So here's the joke, and probably the littlest ones will get it the best. Why do seagulls live by the sea? Okay, why do seagulls live by the sea? And the answer is because if they lived by the bay, they'd be bagels. So that's why I said the younger the audience, probably the more likely they are to get that joke. But there's your joke for Halloween. It's trick-or-treat time. I don't know about y'all, but I religiously believe in trick-or-treat. I go, I buy all the candy. I eat probably most of it myself. I feel like I don't have enough and I go out and I buy more. It's a perfect thing. It happens every year, which I'm sure is why they have the candy in the store the middle of August. <laughs> but I have already downed a bag and we're on bag number two and it's good stuff. Okay, so let's talk fashion. Can we do that? There's so many fun fashions out there. We're gonna talk fashions. So first we're going to go into a photograph, which is number one. So I'm gonna kind of remind you, cause it's fall, it's fall fashion. Sometimes we say, where do we start? We're gonna start with this base. And so this, as we know, we called it the grade eight. It doesn't matter what you call it, but the, the goal is to make sure we have our bases covered and then to layer on top of that because then our wardrobes will be so much more wearable, expandable, um, condensable when we travel. They're just, they just really work together better. So I wanna move across these and show you. We know this is Eileen Fisher. So, and you guys, you know, if you can't see this picture well, you can pull up Eileen Fisher and you can, this is right off of her website. It's right on the website. So you can get it, look at it, et cetera, et cetera. So first they have a tank and it's a woven tank. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a shell. It's a knit shell, 195. I put up 195 and you notice there's a light and a black or light and dark. And obviously it doesn't have to be black. The beauty of all of this, you guys, is you can make these base colors your, what you like, what you do, what you wear, what you love, you know, it's all about you. That's what I really like about sewing, it's all about me. And then we move into 514, which is a tank, and we see a tank dress, and then we see a tank top. Obviously, if you don't wear dresses, you're not gonna make it that long. You're gonna wear, wear, make it tunic length and then wear leggings with it, which is why on the next line, I crossed out some of hers because um, the first one there, it's supposed to be a, let me see what they call it, put my glasses on. It's supposed to be a cropped pant. Like, no, a cropped pant with a wide leg like that. You guys can do that if you feel it's gonna help you feel your best, but I'm gonna tell you I would X that out. The next one is 3418, which is a slim stretch woven. The next one has lots of fullness at the at the waistline, I would X that out as well. Um, all those extra widths do not help you look thinner and my goal is to help you look your best. So you see the next one is 3418. And then what I did is I subbed in 5019, which is the leggings, because I think that's important. And then I also put in a 3400, just a good old regular yoga pant. 
Um, the yoga pant leg is wider. The regular yoga pant, not the slimmed one, but the regular one, 3400. I'm telling you, I wear it all the time because the leg is slim and then it goes wider at the bottom. It's such a great look. It's just really good look. So there you have it. I'm also tonight, we're gonna sub in a skirt. Skirts are great with tights in the wintertime, with boots, they just, they look tremendous. And it doesn't matter, gosh, how old you are, what you look like, skirts and tights and boots look great together. They make you look hip and young and there's no age that can't wear skirts and tights and boots. All right, so we'll take a look at that a little bit later. But these are the eight pieces that we want to focus on. We've got those patterns. We've got 195. We've got 514. We've got 3400. You guys know this is all your base pieces. This is not anything new. These are just good base pieces. But once you pick your colors, these base pieces should coordinate with those colors. That's the goal. And that's the reason I wanted to point this out tonight. And you're going to see all those patterns repeat themselves as we go into these pieces that we're doing tonight. Okay. So any questions that we can start with? We're good on questions? All right. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our first little ensemble. And this is picture number two. And I saw this, and I do not remember the designers. I wish I did remember the designer, but I do not. Gosh, I wanna say it's either Lafayette 148. I just don't remember. I apologize. However, if you notice, it's very easily done. So the shirt itself is pattern number 195. This is our version. So what we're gonna do is use it as a base. Now what I wanted to do in this particular case is I wanted to keep it all winter white or lights. I didn't want the black in here at all. I wanted it light and bright. And so I just love this. Um, what I did to create this, I cut this, this is 195. The fabric on this is 2756. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of fabric. The minute this fabric came in, I thought I have to cut some of that fabric for me. And so I did. I used two yards to make this top. I cut the sweater set 10 inches longer. And the reason I did that is because you're gonna see that I have elastic in these seams. So all I did was I cut the elastic, stitched it down, and that does all that ruching. It's so easy, it's so quick, and I just love the look. So I did the front seam, I did the center front, and what I did is I put a clip at the bottom and a clip at the top, and I sewed the elastic before I even put the top together. Don't wait until it's done. Decide how long you want it to be, and then make your elastic uh, one to one and a half of that so that you don't get too much, you don't want too much, you just want it to be nice. One to one and a half is a really nice, one to two is gonna be probably too much, it's your top, you decide, but one to one and a half is a good guide. So if I measure from where I want it to start, from, from here to where I want it to end, take one and one and a half of those or work it backwards, cut your elastic that long. What I did is I used my, uh, let me just show you, I used my two inch wide elastic and I just cut it in quarter inches because that two inch wide elastic cuts down. So really easy to cut that elastic and by having the two inches, you have all the widths you need. So that's the beauty of buying this two inch elastic is you've got it all. Okay, so then I put it underneath. I literally just got thread the same color and I stitched it, back stitched, stitched it and bam, I had my ruching on my top. And, and it fits and I love it. All right, so I did it on the front. I did it on both sides. I also did it on the back. Now I did this because I knew that I was gonna be wearing it with the skirt. This was, I had a plan, and I think you should always do that. Like think about what you wanna do, what you wanna wear it with. And I had really thought about the scarf. This is a scarf that I had. I just love this scarf. And I was thinking about, okay, what do I wanna wear that scarf with? And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this scarf just because it's just incredibly beautiful. I've seen great scarves, great scarves. This one's right up there. I went to an art show, um, a craft show, art show, whatever you want to call it. High end though. I think I don't think it can be the low end stuff, high end art stuff. And there's a lady named Lynn Langhoff. It's L-L-Y-N-N-L-A-N-G-H-O-F-F. -F. <clears throat> She's a weaver, but it's not just a weaver. She actually dyes her threads, her silk threads, um, and then weaves the pattern throughout the scarf. 
you can't buy it online. You do only have to buy through shows because that's the only place she sells them. But just keep an eye out for her. I don't get any feedback. I don't have anything in the skin in the game. Beautiful woman, beautiful, beautiful pieces of woven cloth that are absolutely stunning, not just to look at, but to feel. And, and most likely you might not be able to see the pattern that is in this. Oh, it's, I mean, it's just beautiful. I just, it's hard to imagine that a human can make something so beautiful to me, but it's really, really pretty. And, you know, obviously very practical, very stylish and something I wanted to incorporate into an outfit and it works beautifully with that winter white. I sent out an email last week introducing these winter whites and some of the things you don't want to do is you don't try, don't try to get matchy matchy. The different levels work beautifully. They don't have to be matchy matchy together. The tones can be a little off and they blend beautifully. So try not to worry so much about getting that. Now my main goal of going winter white, it's a color that I love, but also what it is, it's a color that works beautiful with the skirt that I wanted to do. So if we go to picture number three, um, well, let's take a pause just for a second and let's answer the questions. Um, is it a hoodie you have on? Yes, it's it's 109. We'll talk about, oh, what is that hoodie? Oh, I'm sorry, pattern number 109. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit later. Because you can see that once you have your base pieces, which this is my black shell and my black pants, you can just make another top. And I'll talk about this in a minute. There's a few details I did to it, and I want to share those details with you and show you where that where they came from. Just fun stuff. Okay, and then um, what kind of stitching did you use on the elastic? I used a straight stitch. Doesn't mean you couldn't use a zigzag. The goal is, I don't think I would use a zigzag, actually, now that I say that. The goal is to just let the elastic pull back up. If you zigzag across that elastic, it's less likely to pull up in that same amount. So just do a a straight stitch. Did you make the neckline a v-neck? No, it's not a v-neck. It's just the regular sweater set. I didn't make any changes to the sweater set other than I cut it 10 inches longer to allow for it to come up a little bit. When you sew the elastic down the center front, oh, you use a straight stitch. I got that. What's the ratio for to a body to a body for tunic length? I'm not sure I understand that question. Um, if you'll just rephrase it. Did you put a center front seam? I did not. Um, I felt like a center front seam, well, first off, the one at the store did not, so it didn't even cross my mind, but a center front seam would have too much bulk. It wouldn't allow the elastic to, you know, this is a beautiful, you want a fabric that's light. That's why, again, this is fabric 25, 2756. It's very light, so it, it gathers or ruches, whatever you want to call it, very, very nicely. And a seam in there would, would stiffen it. You would not want a seam down center front. Do you stitch through the elastic? Yes. You have to stitch through the elastic. No zigzag, guys. All right. Is it a special sort of elastic since you can cut it horizontally? Um, I, I mean, I it's our elastic. I don't know if there's anything special about it. I mean, it's great stuff, but you can cut it to any width you want. It's just the way the elastic is made that you can reduce the width and the elastic still stays as elastic. What about the French dart? Would you move it to a different place? with the elastic pulling it. No, the elastic isn't pulling horizontally. It's just pulling vertically, but it's not pulling above the French dart. If you notice, I didn't even start the ruching until around the bust line. So it doesn't impact the French darts at all. It doesn't pull in, it pulls up. Okay, so that's why I cut it 10 inches longer. How close to the hem is the elastic? I left about six inches, but that all that's styling, you guys, and I know you know that, but I left about six inches. And I left about six inch, five at the top and six at the bottom is what I did. Okay, now let's go on to that skirt. Okay, so that skirt, I've seen these, these bias plaid skirts. I've seen them in all different colors and I love them. I just think they are so young looking and so fresh looking. And in the summertime, I wouldn't wear them because I'm just not comfortable with a short skirt on my body. However, in the wintertime, you can fake it because you can put on tights and you can put on boots and it just looks so, so sporty. And it just looks great. It doesn't matter what age you are. So I decided, okay, it's time for me. It's winter time, it's time for me to make, can you get that skirt down there? Can you see that if I move this down? It's time for me to make a little skirt. Buy a skirt, that's what I did. So this is, um, it, the fabric is 2675. It's, it's um, 
like a camel color. I just absolutely love this skirt. On my body, I love it, and I love the bias. Now, can you see that bias there? We're gonna zoom in until you guys can see it. Ooh, great zoom job. Keep, oh yeah, there you go. Is that not pretty? I just absolutely love it. And one thing I like about it, there's several things I like about it. For me, I don't, I don't do beige. I can do winter white, but I can't do beige, but I love beige. So putting beige on the lower half of my body is a dream come true for me because I can include it in my wardrobe. It's beautiful in the winter time, especially this camel plaid, it's such a classic. And I can put winter white on top and complete the look. So that was my goal was to incorporate a beautiful tan, a plaid, a bias, all of those things. The pattern I used was 2017, which is the jean skirt. Now what I did with that is obviously I didn't, I only wanted the shape of the jean skirt. So I'm gonna show you here. I just literally put the pocket behind and cut the jean skirt as one, but I put the whole front on the bias, okay? So you can see that little pocket is reinforced right behind there. Just put it in place. Can you zoom in on that, the little pattern right there? Just so you can see what I did on that pocket. We're getting spoiled with our zoom. All right, there's your pocket. You can see it. Here, I'll take it away. Probably would be better. There's a pocket right there. I put it on and just lined up the notches. You can do it. And then you can lay it down. On the back, there's a yoke. You can't um, do that to the yoke because with the yoke, uh, the yoke has darting in it. So on the back, I just made the, the back and the yoke continuous, the same angle, and sewed it on together. And then I used the waistband. And with the waistband, I just cut it straight. So the waistband across the top here, you can see is just straight band. And that's how it goes. And then what I did is I put an invisible zipper in the side seam. You want it in the left side seam. And I just took it all the way through the band. Very, very easy to do. And again, I love my little outfit. It's, it's great for summer. And then I've got a little pair of um, brown boots. Brown boots are going to make me the hit of the town. How's that? Okay, it's great. Brown, black, you could go either color, but they're all good. So I just love that. And again, basics. Basic skirt, you can do a mile. Um, brown tights, brown boots. I don't know that I'd go black. I think black's a little bit too harsh. If black's all you have, it looks great. Don't get me wrong. But because I have brown and I have a really uh, casual brown, it's to me, that was the goal, was to get that whole thing. So when I start doing this kind of stuff, I kind of get an image in my head. What do I want? What's the goal? What do I, what look do I want? And it's really fun to kind of, because we can do so much of, you know, when we're sewing, we can get that look that we want. All right, there you go. So your length for skirt is one to two. No, it's one to one and a half. It's one to one and a half. You don't look, you could go one to two, but if, if you're going to do a long skirt, you guys, in the winter time, it's really going to, um, it's going to make you look shorter and wider. So especially with tights, there's no reason to have a long skirt. You know, your short skirt is going to make you look so much taller and so much thinner. Your jean skirt, 2017, it's already brought in at the bottom. So it, it's going to give you a great look just to wear that jean skirt just like it is. But just take away all your pockets and put a side zip in. Um, the top of the body is one and the skirt is two. No. Okay, so it's one to one and a half. And then this part is two to three. So let me, let me just explain briefly. Your skirt is in relationship to your height. And that piece stays constant. It's either one to one. And, it's one to one is a mini skirt. One to one and a half is a knee length skirt. One to two would be a long skirt, mid calf. One to three obviously is pants. But anyway, so the skirt stays the length. And then how long you take this top, I'm doing two to one. So if I measured the whole length and divided by three, two of those are the top. And once you have the base pieces all related to you, your tops can go in and out of lengths and they'll already be in proportion to those base pieces. Okay. Okay. Do you have a ratio for the tunic length? Yeah, it's two to th two to one. It's thirds, two to one. Okay. Okay. Great outfit. I love the look. I would go out right here. If you want to add a belt, that would be fun too. It's all dependent on 
how it fits, how it comes in, you know, all that other stuff. What else you're wearing it with? I have a couple secret weapons that I'm going to pull out because if you remember my little coat that I made, I love this. I love this. This was 709. This is the trench. No, I can't remember. This was not the trench. This is uh, Megan. Sorry. Megan's coat and I just made it plain. But this would be a great look over that whole thing. It's long. It's long enough to cover. <gasps> I love this thing. I've actually already pulled it out and worn it. Just love it, love it, love it. Okay. What length is the skirt? I did it just above my knee. Okay. So my particular boots that I'm going to wear with this are high calf and little tights to connect them. Same color as the boots. Okay. So now we're going to talk about stretch velvet. It's fabulous and it's everywhere. So we're going to take this off. And I did a little stretch velvet because this basically is 195. It's just got a different neckline. So 115 is called Anne's Top. The stretch velvet is 2725. Absolutely love it. Is the back yoke on the bias also? It is. Yes, would be that answer. I love stretch velvet. Crutch velvet. It's all over the place, you guys. If you're out in the stores at all, it's everywhere. I mean, trench coats. They're doing everything out of it. So by all means, like embrace it and enjoy it. And boy, is it flattering. It's really flattering. Easy to make. The top didn't make her, you know, any time at all. This is your kind of go budget outfit is what it's going to be called. Because what I did on top of it, I'm going to go to picture number four now. And this is a wrap that I saw. And I want you to notice this wrap a little bit different in that it's just a straight piece of fabric. I'll give you the measurements but it had a little loop on it. And the purpose of that loop, I made this, you guys, this is out of um, fabric 2515. The fabric is on sale. It's on sale for $9.99 a yard. So there you go. So what I did is on the edge of this fabric, the selvage, is like a little, I don't know, it's like a binding and it almost looks like an entrenoe in between the two binding pieces. But it's not on Trudeau, it's just kind of how they did it. So what I did is I cut a little bit of that. Stay tight on that for a second, I'm gonna show them the loop. And what I did is I just cut a little bit off that I wasn't using, and I made a little loop out of it. There you go, see that little loop? And I'll show you how to position it and where to position it. I, I positioned it right over a little circle. So that when I made this, and this only takes a yard, you're only gonna take the width of the fabric and you're gonna cut one yard. And then you're gonna put it on and just gather it up around your neck, you know, divide it by half. The little loop is here, and this edge comes over here, tucks in the loop, and that's how it stays. It is just adorable. Look at it, you can make a little cowl, you can pull it as tight through that loop as you want, but this way you're getting this dramatic effect and it holds tight in that little loop, and the whole thing the only sewing you do is to sew on the loop. The reason being is because the edge of this fabric, you don't want to finish it. It's just too cool. It's all uneven. It just looks wonderful. The selvage you use because it's a great finish. And it, I mean, it's just a wonderful little project. It's talk about quick and easy, but it's and cheap. It's $9.99, 10 bucks. Love it, $25.15. We don't have that much of it left. But I just, I've, I've loved the fabric ever since it came in. And to see it go in, I thought, I've not made anything with it. I saw this cape, and I, you know, that cape in that picture is much heavier, but I like the lighter. I like having that dramatic effect. Now, I put it over brown. Again, I was trying to stay with browns and creams, and then I'm going to come into blues, but I wanted to tie them into black, and that's a great way to do it, just with a little black wrap, because as you can well see, this can clearly go to this one. And you know, our season, our fall season this year, I don't think I've ever, I mean, last year it had a lot, but I don't think I've ever seen so many wraps and ponchos and capes. They're just incredible. So this makes a great topper for this also. And of course that um, just put it on to figure out your best place for that loop to go. And then go from the top down. 
and that way it'll hold it into that space nice and light. And you can see it just opens up. It's a great dramatic effect. It's just really pretty. Okay. Okay. I believe Peggy said the yoke is not cut on the bias. The yoke is cut on the bias. I continued the yoke on the bias so that the back of the skirt all looks the same. And then I just cut the band that stabilizes the yoke and the skirt. Can you show how to check the nap on the velvet? I can. Um, you know, I had a, another, yes, I can. So what you want to do, you guys, is I'm just going to, we're just going to play undress with my little mannequin. Actually, we don't need to. We'll do, we can do it this way. We'll use a sleeve. The, generally, the way that nap should go is down. Because when it's down, it's darker. When it's up, it's lighter. So the right, there's not a right way because designers these days turn things every which way they want to. The old way was that the, it was always better to have the darker because you could pet it and feel that the darker was down. You can do it any way you want. Just, you know, like uh, last year, the year before I did one where the middle panel was turned the opposite way. I loved that. I just loved it. So definitely things are being done that are out of the box that are terrific. But if you're making just a good old regular shirt, I would suggest that you want it all to go the same way. All right. So just when you lay out your cloth, Make sure all your pieces are going the same way. It's not difficult at all. It's very easy to do. You just have to be conscious of it. I think I do it, it doesn't matter what I'm making. I think most of the time I do it anyway. I, I, you know, you've only got four pieces. And so to switch them and go a different direction would almost be unnatural. So it's really more natural just to cut them all out to be the same. Um, if you use 195, how do you make the lower turtleneck? Well, that's, that's just a pattern making question. You know, that's turns into pattern 115. So <laughs> you can buy 115 and make it into 195. That would probably be easier than to make all of the rest. Okay. Can you please play it, place the polka dot wrap over the winter white top? Yeah, I did. You got it. Good idea. So you can see it, right? Yep. Thank you. Okay. So again, that base is so important, create that base, and then we're gonna layer on top. All right, so let's keep going. Um, we did two 195s or 115, same, same base body. You just want that base knit top. We're gonna to move into 514. The 514 is our tank top, and so it starts to become um, a woven, it can be a woven or a knit, it can be either one. And in this particular case, um, this is my tank top that I created. Now, because I wanted a little bit of twist on the tank top, this is 514. The fabric is 2770. I saw this in the store and I was just loved it, loved it, where they took part of the tank and just, you know, turned a part of a stripe and just turned it a different way. Absolutely fell in love with that. Kind of not that big a deal, but I just really liked it. Maybe I was just having fun shopping and it hit me at the moment, but I just really liked how unusual it was. It was at the bottom, I did it at the bottom. And I think, I think we've got this picture. Do we have this picture by chance? No, is that our next picture? No. No, okay, so I, I, no, I took it, but I didn't, I must not have, I've got it on my camera, but I didn't convey it. That's okay. I just want you to see kind of where I got the inspiration from. It's not a big deal. No, that's okay. Okay, so just know that a lot of times um, in tops, they're just cut up in pieces and put back together. So I like this, I wanted to show you, again, using this fabric. The fabric is a rayon, it's beautiful. It's a rayon, it's a stretch woven. I loved it, um, I, I, I love the drape. And I, a lot of times the drape and the feel is what attracts me to a fabric. I mean, obviously the color and the way it looks, but that drape and that feel suck me in, and, you know, kind of throw me under the bus. I just love drape. And this is, this is great drape. So what I did on this is I cut this and I cut it six inches longer because I wanted it again to wear with my leggings. That's the look I wanted. 
um, I put a center front seam, which you can't tell because I obviously just put it right where the pattern continued, so you can't even tell that it's a center front seam. But that center front seam gave me the ability then to cut this and then flip it a different direction. And obviously you can't flip that piece a different direction, but it does enable you to, um, you know, create the look. And I just really like the look. So very simple to do, and, and you guys know. You could even put a little pocket in there if you wanted to. The one I looked at did not have a pocket. I was just thinking you could. If you love pockets, that's the way to do it. Okay, so what that brings us to is Rebecca Minkoff. And Rebecca Minkoff does all kinds of great design. She's really known for her jewelry, but she's done a lot of, um, she's done a lot of everything lately. Designers are all kind of merging and doing more and more and more and putting their name on it because what they're recognizing is labels sell. So, um, this wrap, I fell in love with it. Was, I found it in Nordstrom's and this is fabric 2769. We have so many beautiful sweater wraps, you guys. I really just wanted you to um, recognize how much fun they were, how, how great they are for wraps. I did a wrap and then I also did a top out of one. These little sweater knits are just really beautiful. They're cotton poly blends. The poly gives them the stability. A lot of times 100% cotton will stretch, not always. But what this is, is it's um, two yards. So it's two yards long, and the length, you can tell from the selvage, look where the selvage is. The selvage is actually going this way. So it's two yards long, and it's um, one yard, well the fat, no wait a minute, that's not right. Sorry, I'm messing up. Yeah, it's just one yard. It's one yard. It's it's 70 inches wide or it's 60 inches wide. It's wide enough that it can go from front to back. That's the width of the bolt right there. And all you do is need one yard. I said that wrong, okay? So just one yard of, is all you need. There's your selvage. You see it's got a, like a magnificent selvage. The selvage is absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna zip on in there and show you. Is that the best? And of course, so obviously with that selvage, there's nothing to finish. So you've got this two yard, one yard piece. Sorry, I keep saying one yard piece. All right, so what you're gonna do is right in the middle, you're gonna come in and cut it all the way up to the neckline. It's about halfway. If you cut it too far, it won't hang evenly front to back. You're just gonna cut it and you're gonna finish this edge. And what I did is I just surged it and I tucked it under. You're gonna finish this edge all the way up and over. See how it hangs over the arm? It's completely open. Now let me just tell you, this little Rebecca Minkoff wrap that's just like this was almost $300 at Nordstrom's. But honestly, what sold me on this was the way they had it on the mannequin. They had it just thrown over the shoulder like this. You know, it created that cow and that beautiful little peekaboo. They had another little top but I really like the fact that it just had that great little peekaboo underneath. It's so pretty on. The drape is beautiful. Everything about it is beautiful. And it just makes a, a really pretty focal point. I loved it. So the top is the fat pattern is 514. The fabric is 2770. The wrap is 2769. And it's just one yard is all it is. And it's a walk in the park. Pretty easy to do. Is the brown one 115? Yes, it is. And what is the back like? The back of 115? Oh, the blue. Thank you. The blue and the white. I'll take this off and you can see it. Oh, and since everybody's having tags, I put my tag. And the reason I put the tag in is it's so much easier when you go to put it on to kind of know what the back is, you know. So it, it, I found that when I went to wear it and went to put it on, it was a lot easier to kind of be able to know and orient, orientate it, to have that tag right at center back and to get it kind of halfway front to back and balance it a little bit. So I just found that it made it really fun. Anyway, okay, so there's the back of the tank. It's just straight. I didn't make any changes to it, cut it on the fold, etc. And there is the front, okay? 
All right, we'll put our little lady's wrap on. She's probably cold. It's kind of chilly up here. And we'll put a little wrap on her. But you can see that this wrap, especially the colors, you guys, I'm watching my colors so that I can blend them all together. You know, in this case, I can do the blue over the white and the camel. I mean, it really transitions. I can do this blue over this brown. My whole goal is to really make all these things match. I also watched that I could take this scarf right here and I could change up my looks by putting this scarf on here. And it really changes up the look, especially if I just put it on with a jacket. And that's where my jacket comes into play. And I can put my jacket there. And it's just a great look. Changes it completely, but it really makes it versatile. Okay, so what the goal is, is to have all these styles kind of pulled together. Okay, um, how much do you need for the neck on the wrap? The neck on the wrap. I'm not sure, you'll have to rephrase that question. Is there any pins, brooches, etc., being used to keep the wraps on? Uh, no, I do use the loop here, which I liked, and the blue one just gets tossed over the shoulder. You can use a brooch if you want. Um, it's totally your style. I know standing still they stay put, but walking in the wind could easily slide off. Absolutely, yeah, I mean, just accommodate it for whatever you want. Something like this though, where, let me just show you on this. That cold wind is really a killer. That's why you lived, you moved to Texas, so you don't have to worry about that, see? All right, so this one right here, this is another way I actually saw it at Nordstrom's, is they had done like that, and they actually took these two front pieces, and they tied them like that. So that kind of almost makes like a cape in the back, and that would secure it in the front to where, um, you know, it would stay very secure. And, and I love that too. So keep in mind, you've got those two front pieces. You can do different things with them. You can kind of get creative and see where you want to go with that. You know, it's fun. It's just fun. All kinds of different things. So there you go. That'll keep it on. If it's a windy, blustery day and you're cold, it's another layer for you. Is the black dot same as the blue? No. Um, no, the black dot is much thinner. The blue is one yard. And the black dot is not even a yard. It's only you know, a half yard. And it's all just one piece. There's no cutting, there's no sewing, there's no anything. The blue, you've got to cut up the middle and kind of wrap around you. The, the black dot kind of goes around your shoulders. Okay. It's got a little loop right there. You can tell I like the loop, huh? I really like the loop. What I like about these wraps too is they're small enough you can kind of put them in your handbag already and just use them if you're cold. A lot of times in restaurants and stuff I get cold and it's nice to have something to throw over my shoulders. How do you finish where the label is on the wrap? Where the edges meet at the end of the cut? Um, for here I just surged it and turned it under and it met right at the selvage. The selvages came together so I just backstitched right there at the base. Okay. Okay. So let's do more. Okay. We got more because you know, I just can't stop. All right. So the next one is number five. So that's my sweatshirt I have on. So I was in Saks. Actually, this is Neiman Marcus. I was in Neiman Marcus. It's really sad when I can't remember what city I was in, but it doesn't matter. It's just the fact that I can't remember. But anyway, I don't know where I was, but they had a Neiman's and I went. Um, and I just love, this is Aloe, A-L-O, and they do a lot of yoga wear, but they're high-end yoga wear. And I love looking at their different stuff and figuring out why they charge what they charge. And they do because it's kind of cute and they can get away with it. It's kind of like Lululemon. I mean, how good can yoga wear get? It gets good, don't get me wrong, but it's pretty pricey stuff. What's the price on this? Brett, can you see that? 118. 118. All right, 118. Wow. This, the one I have on is the same. I liked the rounder neck, so I like that better. I like the fact that you could layer it. 
I like that better because to me you wouldn't do yoga with that sweatshirt on. It'd get too hot because I do yoga and I get hot pretty quick, but it's a great warm up. You'd want to take it off. So your choice, the pattern is 109. The fabric is 2774 that I'm wearing and I really like it. Let me show you what attracted me and, and sold me on that sweatshirt is these crazy sleeves, you guys. And you know, I mean, I think sometimes my People look at me like I'm crazy, but I just love crazy stuff. So it's cut. Let me just show you how it's cut. Um, there is a piece as if you had on, you know, like if you do a sweatshirt cuff at the bottom, the cuff is a little smaller than the rest of it. So the cuff just goes literally from the elbow to the hem. So you're going to make a cut across the sleeve and the whole bottom of the sleeve is actually like a cuff. It's cut a little bit smaller. And then you're just going to cut out these sections. There's four sections. And then you put on these long ties. And what the ties do is they tie the sleeve at the elbow. And then I just, you could wear it like that. I guess you could wear it down. I just liked them pulled up. I liked the way they looked. I just love the sweatshirt. And I know some of you will say, well, you looks like you got holes in your sweatshirt. I know. But as I'm sitting here looking at my son, he's got holes all over his sweatshirt and it's like the look, it's a great look. I love it. I've said to him, like, I really like your shirt. Like I keep looking at that. Something about that deconstructed look I really like. If you don't like it, this is not going to be a top for you. Sew up the sleeves, call it a day, go on home. But anyway, I really like it. I really like the funky look. Okay. Especially I really like it when it's pulled up and I'm not sure why that is, but and also it's my Portland sweatshirt because it has a, it has a hood. And one time we were in Portland and everybody was, you know, four sons, myself, and it was raining. It rains obviously a lot in Portland and every one of them had a hood and we're walking downtown and they're not getting wet and I didn't have a hood. So I've started putting hoods on like everything <laughs> so that if, if I need it, I have a hood to pull up. But anyway, so now I have a hood and I'm ready to go. Okay, so easy enough to do that aloe sweatshirt, expensive, fun, creative, look at it, be aware of it, and then see if you want to do it. Um, how do you finish the edges? Oh, her question. So the cut doesn't tear. Okay, so let me explain that a little bit better. When you cut and you've stopped cutting, let me take this off and we can zoom in so you can see you cut up to the middle. Once you cut up to the middle, you just stop and you turn, you surge. So when you cut it, it opens it up and you're going to surge it. It becomes like this U thing and you're going to surge. So I surged here, here, over to here. And then I just turned it under and top stitched it. You don't even see it. I mean, it just, you cannot even see the surging. So wherever you stop cutting, it's just going to be the middle and it turns into like this U thing. So if you do it, you will see that it's very simple. It doesn't have a cut. It's just where the cut stops and you have your little, your little shawl or whatever you want to call it. I just love this thing. Ah, it is just too cute. Okay. So then I want to show you this little green sweater set I made, not sweater set, sorry, but it's like the sweater set. Um, it is inspired by this next picture. It's number, is it up there? Do you have the number? There we go. So this is an Eileen Fisher. How much is that price? I always leave the prices in you guys because I mean, what can two yards of fabric cost? Now, it depends on what your time is worth. If your time is worth, you know, more than 50 bucks an hour, you're going to have to factor that in too. But this is not Eileen Fisher. I love this look. It's an asymmetric. It's our 216. I looked at that and thought, that's exactly our 216. I got to do a 216. But if you look close at that, what you see is the lines in that, the ridges. I love the texture in this. They're horizontal which I thought was interesting because they're horizontal even though there's that angle. And, and I don't know that I would have done that, but I like it, and so I duplicated it. 
So when I came to this fabric, and I, I love this fabric, and I thought it was perfect for it. It was 27, um, 2773. It's a green and black. The stripes, I, I'm going to move this out of the way just so you can get a little bit better look. The stripes went horizontal, and they can go either way because this has stretch in both directions, but I left it horizontal. I went ahead and matched the sleeves, so it goes horizontal all the way across, and I just love that asymmetric look. Oh, I just think that is so good looking. I just love it. And it's really fun when you make enough clothes that it, you struggle with what you want to wear because you like them all that much. So that's good news. All right, so there we have it. Easy. I didn't do anything different to the pattern. I did just serge those edges. You don't need to try to do a rolled edge when it comes to a knit. It's too fine of a stitch for too heavy of a gauge of sweater knit. So I just tried it. You can see this is... Can you come in close on this? Um, you can see that that is just a surged edge and it lays really nice and flat. We're going to just try to come in as close as we can. So you can see how pretty that is. That's a surged edge. I mean, it's just that simple. It lays nice and flat. You just don't see it because of the, of the texture of the knit. It just almost absorbs that thread. So it's really beautiful. I would wear just a little black tank underneath this. And that way it would really pop that green color. So it's really, really, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Great look. Great, very contemporary. Okay. How did you finish the cuts on the sleeves? Oh, on this I didn't. You don't. You just, they, aloe didn't. You can look at it online. The reason I give you all this stuff is so you can sometimes get a better look online. I didn't finish anything. I just cut them out. Pretty easy to do. No finish required. All right, so then I want to show you this next picture. And I wanted you to see, because this is, um, I've seen this blouse so many different places. I did not have a chance to make it, but I want to show you this blouse. This is um, Alice and Olivier, which I, I think you guys probably know the name. I've mentioned it several times. Alice, Alice and Olivier, um, designers, that's her two grandchildren, is I believe where the name comes from. But I want you to see that this is our 719, and the collar is connected, but all they did, instead of doing the long tie, all of this comes off. You don't do the buttonholes in the shirt. You don't do any of that. And you just cut these short and you either fasten a button or something and you make a little, um, like a little neck band. It's adorable. You just cut the ties off short and I, I'm telling you, I bet I saw four of these out there. I saw so many of them. I couldn't believe it. And I kept thinking, that's 719, that's 719, that's 719. So you've got your v-neck, you've got your facings, you've got everything there. You just cut the tie short. It still folds over. But you can put a little button on the side. You can do numerous things. It's adorable. You can even do it in knit. It doesn't have to be a woven. It can be knit as well. So I just wanted to show that to you and, and just show you how easy and what a great version of 719 that was. Okay. Um, do you mean for the side seam on the green top to come so much forward? Yeah, yeah, it's part of the pattern. It's, an, it's 216 is the pattern number. If you look at the pattern, you'll see. Yeah. I think it's even better than the Eileen Fisher because it's got the slit. It's a much more vertical asymmetric than her asymmetric. Her asymmetric is crooked, but it's not near the flow of what this is. This is really beautiful on. Um, yeah, the, the asymmetric is just, you know, instead of it just being a front and a back, this back wraps around to the front. It still has the darting, but it wraps around. It's very pretty. 216, if you're not familiar with it, look at it. It's really a beautiful pattern. Okay, so then just in closing, what I wanted to show you was that this is the blouse we did last Thursday night. This was the Hugo Boss. Um, love the shirt. Love the shirt. Love the fabric. Probably love everything about this thing. But again, this was the start of my pieces because as I incorporated this with my black and my bases, my wraps and things like that could all go over them. So easily I could pull in the winter white. And the goal was to really give myself a new top but have lots of versatility as to what else I could wear with that top. All right, so I think you are ready. I think you've seen a lot. And the goal is to get the base and to really 
you know, I've got not that many things. And remember, one of the things that I wore, especially with this top, was this um, dual. I don't even know the fabric number. But anyway, it's just an amazing fabric. Very simple. It's Megan's coat. But it, it worked so well with some of the leggings and some of just a, like a little top. It just really goes together well. So the goal is to keep the sewing simple enough that if, when you add in one more piece, you really, it's part of a bigger plan. So start with the base. Get those base pieces down. Get a base color. Pick maybe three colors that you wanted. I wanted a brown, I wanted a blue, and I wanted a green. So those were kind of the base colors that I went with. And then you can just pull everything together. I kept the winter white as a base and I kept the black as a base. And it was fun. It was just fun. And like I said, I can't wait to wake up tomorrow because I get to wear something new. It's all ready to go. All right, so let's answer questions if we have any. And other than that, I've got my hoodie, I've got my pockets. Doesn't get any better. Are we good? All right. So girls, you know what's next. It's sewing time from Silhouette Patterns. So next time we're gonna talk about Kate's blouse. We don't even have any more Kate's blouse. We've sold out of them. So clearly what we're going to do is introduce another blouse that will be a POM that we'll just reduce at the same price. Um, and we'll, I'll, do, I'll do both. I'll do the Kate's blouse as a POM. I'll do two, two blouse patterns. I really want you to focus on blouses um, simply because it's kind of the area that we're all shying away from a little bit. I've not done any online classes on it because I know it sounds kind of crazy, but it actually is probably the hardest garment we make. It's not hard, but we have to think more about what ease we want, what movement we want. We don't have to think about any of that with knits. We have to think about that when we come to blouses. So we're going to tackle all of that. Um, and we will be back in two weeks. So until then, you guys, we have some beautiful fabrics for you. We'll put them up in the morning. We've got some sweater knits. Oh, there's so much beautiful fabric. It's, it's kind of fun. Happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns. Bye. Happy fall. Bye.